If you value personal or spiritual growth, want to maximize your potential, live consciously and want to make a change in this world, you're at the right place because we have with us today award-winning author and empowering speaker, Lillian Grace. Welcome to our show, Lillian. Thank you so very much. Uh, and of course, you know those lines are from uh, the opening lines from your website. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I thought that summarizes you best, so I just had to use them. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, so um, what inspired you into becoming an author, a writer? I've always loved to write. I think probably it was inspired originally by loving to read. You know, as a child, I loved stories. I loved to escape into the world of stories. And then I discovered I enjoyed creating those worlds as well, you know, inventing characters and situations and, and over time to see if I could draw the reader into the world of the story. Mm, yeah. Beautiful. So uh, what I've found is that in your, in your writing, you know, you've always tried and connected uh, the real and fictitious world in a beautiful yes. blend. Um, how does that usually happen? Like, um, I, I know that, you know, sometimes bestsellers go in for fantasy and uh, you, you, your writing is usually devoid of fantasies and, you know, you come, come into a world of realism where uh, the, uh, the reader can connect. Um, so uh, how did All that right. happen? So, you know, this is very interesting because what I observed was in, in literature, we have got this fantasy, these fantasy worlds, and especially if we think about youth literature, mm -hmm. not many children these days are going to find a dragon's egg in their backyard. You know, and like they're, they're, they're beautiful fantasy stories, but it's not relatable to everyday lives. And then you have reality stories and we can read about drugs and being a refugee and all these different. And they're also very interesting, important, informative stories. Right. But what I want to do was come in the middle right. and bring fill in that have, void. Well, mm. fill in the space in the middle where it could be I could be writing stories about real people, ordinary, everyday people, real life situations but bring magic into their lives in so far as, so my first book, The Mastery Club, was about a group of young adolescents who form a club to support each other in achieving their goals and dreams. So they take empowering ideas they've heard to create magic in their real lives instead of fictional fantasy magic, you know, fantasy magic. So, right. yeah, so that was kind of where I decided to play. Mm, uh, they're talking about Mastery Club. I know that uh, you've released a squeal to it and uh, it's, it's the hidden audio. Uh, the hidden order, order yes. The hidden order. Yes. Yes. Uh, about the Mastery Club and the hidden order, like um, there are a lot of uh, philosophical themes that you have um, uh, uh, given light to. Uh, tell us how these uh, philosophical, philosophical themes took shape and wh what was your inspiration for these themes? All right, good. So when I was growing up, let me give you a little family history first. Right. All right. See, my mother went through the Holocaust mm. and she had a very difficult childhood upbringing, etc. And then she came to Australia as an immigrant. And so that was a new challenge mm -hmm. as, a, you know, almost a refugee. Mm -hmm. And her, she had a lot of questions about life. How could these evil things happen? How could people do these things? And these questions took her beyond the rabbis. And she turned to Eastern philosophy and all sorts of other places to find answers to her questions. So when I was growing up as a teenager, I was drawn to books on her bookshelf. She had lots and lots of books. And they were books from different philosophical perspectives and things about being, you know, Tibetan masters and all sorts of interesting things. And I'd read these books and it made me very interested in life and consciousness and how right. we create our world and our reality. Mum actually became a yoga and meditation teacher for a while, you know. Exactly. So I had all of this kind of interesting stuff going on in my the back of my mind. And then as a young woman, I began to attend workshops, personal development workshops, and I learned more about these these very, very interesting ideas. For example, um, you know, from the, the Indian philosophy, this idea of the creator, the maintainer, the destroyer, you know, right. that was a fascinating concept to me when I first came upon it. And I've included mention of that in the hidden order, you know, and the hidden order proposes this idea that the world appears to be broken and unjust, but there is a hidden order at work when you know what you're looking for, that there are universal laws, you know, everyone's familiar with the law of gravity, right? But we don't necessarily realize that there are other laws at work, like the law of polarity, which is expressed in the yin yang. Absolutely, symbol, the, balance. You know, the balance of order yeah. and chaos and light mm. and dark and so forth. And that actually, if we fully understand these laws and principles, 
they make it much easier to live a centered balanced life Beautiful. and wow. these ideas I just love them and I wanted to share them and my favorite medium is story and so I thought I take these great ideas I take story and of course children are important to me and to put it into story for young people. It is very essential to address uh, to the audience that you address to the uh, the teenagers who are right there at that juncture of their life where you know uh, there's a whole big world out in front of them and tell us uh, your experiences of do, do they get back to you like uh, your readers do they get back to you and uh, yes definitely. how does that feel? Oh it's wonderful I mean <laughs> it really Really, I think was most impactful when I wrote the Mastery Club because that was my first book mm -hmm. and I had flowing in just emails and messages and and you know I remember speaking to someone once I rang to follow up on a book order and and the person just about squealed on the other end of the phone and called her mum and said oh the author's on the phone you know oh my. <laughs> it was very exciting <laughs> being a celebrity suddenly Oh, lovely. Yes. <laughs> uh, tell us, how, how long did it take for you to come up with the Mastery Club? Well, the, the seeds of the idea, actually, do you know, in a way, this, the, the core idea came when I was watching my son when mm -hmm. he was nine years old playing with his friends and they had been reading Harry Potter books. So there's okay. that fantasy mm -hmm. model, you know, mm -hmm. and they're all wearing cloaks and wands and, you know, playing yeah. around like this. And I was watching them and I thought, wouldn't it be great if kids knew they could do magic for real? Right. In the sense that they could apply their minds and create magical change in their life. You know, we, we all hear about people who have an illness, a cancer or something, and they heal themselves. Right. You know, we hear about, I mean, I know people who've got up out of wheelchairs again and walked. You Absolutely. know, when they were told the power they of the mind. Yes. Yeah, or all, all these sorts of things. Or people who, you know, they, they couldn't find the job they wanted or the house they wanted or something and they apply their mind and their attention and they create it to me that's magic right. that's magic in a realistic sense you know mm -hmm. so anyway with the kids I wanted to put that idea out there and then having read all the things and attended the workshops you know and I just thought well like maybe I'll have a child who's been brought up reading fantasy magic stories you know and a child who's been brought up with these these ideas these powerful ideas and they meet and they form a club you know and from there mm -hmm. this that's, idea that's the whole uh, thing behind the mastery club. that's right mm -hmm. so that's how that that came to pass you know mm -hmm. the mastery club yeah. interesting like talking about your son now i i understand that um, you've uh, uh, always loved the uh, homeschooling uh, technique and you've adopted that for all your children Yes, well, my children are all adults now. My son, my, that, that son who was nine is 27 now. And, my. and the girls, are, my, I have twin daughters are 23. Uh -huh. They're all out in the world and all over the place doing their own thing. But yes, we did spend most of their school years were homeschooled. And we were joined um, various homeschooling groups. Mm -hmm. And we went on camps with home educators and activities and all sorts of things. And, and in fact, one of the main characters in the Mastery Club is also home educated. Home educated, yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Inspired from your, your life. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah from my experiences. Yeah. Interesting. So um, after the Mastery Club and um, the uh, Hidden um, Order, mm -hmm. you've uh, moved on to writing, um, uh, based, you're writing this based on financial um, advices for, I wouldn't call it advices, but then, you know, it, it led them on a financial uh, angle. Yes, financial. Uh, um, education, financial intelligence, right. financial financial literacy, whatever you want to call it. But Absolutely. So the yeah. quest for riches. Quest for uh, riches. Yes, uh, yes. Deals with this one. Yes. Uh, tell us the book um, that brought us together. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. So um, um, I'm really excited because um, from someone who's uh, followed Eastern philosophy, who's had such a deep-rooted understanding of Eastern philosophy, to someone who is um, giving the um, the financial mantra, as I call it, uh, to the um, teenagers. How did that happen? How did that happen? Yeah. All right. So the story began with a woman called Camilla Mendoza, who mm -hmm. is a business mm -hmm. and life coach. Who's collaborated with you in this yes. project. Yes. So she was um, Australian, but she was living in London. Okay. And she contacted me and said, I've just read The Mastery Club mm -hmm. and I love it. And I can see that you're very good at teaching through story. Mm -hmm. So then she said, I have a business called Money Mastery for Teens. Mm -hmm. So there I am with the Mastery Club for Teens and, and children, you know, and she's got Money Mastery money for, master teens. for Teens. So it was a lot of yeah. synergy. Mm -hmm. And she said, 
I would love you to write a story, a fictional story that takes the ideas in my workshop and puts them out through the story. And I said, I would love to do that because my favorite thing in the world is to put empowering ideas into fiction, into story. Right. So we talked on Skype, you know, mm -hmm. we had a mm -hmm. number of meetings and one of the very interesting ideas she was bringing was one thing she teaches in her workshop is that there are four money personalities. Right. And these are based on the main four personality profiles that you hear from psychology. Yes. But it's how these people relate to money, how they handle money. And she wanted us to create a book about four teenagers who would represent the four money personalities. Mm -hmm. And so we thought, okay, well, how can we show, how can we demonstrate their differences in their character, in their personality? And we thought, let's have them, because a lot of schools are doing this, you know, sending their kids on excursions to other countries and all that. So we said, let's have them go on a school trip mm -hmm. and they have to raise the money to go, perhaps, you know, so how they deal with the money raising mm -hmm. part, you know, mm -hmm. before they go on the trip. And then we said, let's send them to India because it has such extremes of wealth and poverty and all of the rest of it. I'd never been to India, but I thought that's a great idea, you know. <laughs> so we brainstormed this idea and then she went away and I focused and, and wrote the book. And because we didn't have a budget to send me to India, mm -hmm. I had to do a whole lot of research online and through people I knew, you know, right. Indians or, or friends who ran tour But companies you were already connected to the uh, to India by, with Eastern philosophy. Um, yes, and I your did ways have, of life. Yes. You could say I had a spiritual connection, <laughs> connection. to India, but in no practical experience. But I had so many beautiful, generous people, you know, one of my, my friends mm -hmm. who has been to India to ashrams right. many times. Right. And some of her stories are in the book word for word. They were amazing stories about oh. the ashram experience, oh, you know. Lovely. And another um, friend who actually had attended a writing course of mine, mm -hmm. she runs, uh, she's got uh, Spirit India tours, you know. And so she um, answered questions and sent me photos, which helped, you know, because I could see you these could connect, pictures. Yeah, you know? yeah. And another woman who ran, who's a company called Beacon Travel, and they... Right. Um, she was giving a talk in the library one day. I went to the talk and I connected with her and she gave me so much help to develop the idea. And then we had a family friend living in Kerala. Oh, in lovely. India, That's where she's from. You're from. <laughs> right. Well, and so he also gave me a lot of help and read what I wrote and, you know, send feedback and, and things like that. So they've been... And, and another gentleman I ran at a, met at a business networking event. Right. He gave me one of the key ideas in the book. Oh, beautiful. So there's been a lovely, generous, you know, and then I was online Googling, you Exchange know, with different ideas, trip yeah. advisor and all that, you know, <laughs> when I was checking on the different tour sites, because they go to various sites in the Golden Triangle, right, you know, for this, right. this trip. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, it was, it was an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, have you ever felt like uh, you had to visit India after you wrote the book? Well, after, I, after I wrote it, I felt like I had been there. Been there already. <laughs> but I'm sure I'll go at some point. And my, my husband um, works with Indians in his, very, his current right. occupation and the previous one. Right. And so we have both said, oh, at one point we must go. You know? uh -huh, uh -huh. I mm. think, yeah, as a fulfillment to your yes, spiritual life, right. you know, somewhere you can yes. connect. Yeah. Yes. This is beautiful. Uh, so um, Quest for Riches uh, dealing with... Um, money matters for teenagers um what so you, you said that this has been already in the market for some time yes and uh, there's a, a kind of funny story you know how life sometimes departs from your intention you know you have a particular intention of how something will happen and then life happens mm -hmm. and it goes in a different way <laughs> absolutely yeah <laughs> so the book was supposed to be launched a year ago mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. brought it out in readiness for the launch and then life got in the way and all sorts of things happen i happened to get married early last year and we had our honeymoon which got in and all ah. sorts of things happened and we, there was a slow process so we're only now mm -hmm. getting to the official launch which is going to be the 30th of june in melbourne Beautiful. So if any of your listeners and your viewers are interested in attending, if they contact me, I can um, definitely That's lovely. send invitations. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, uh, I also know that uh, your grandmother was also a publisher. Yes. Uh, so you have uh, uh, writing in your blood. Uh, it's all yes, there. Mom, it's well, my grandmother family. was a published <laughs> author. Yes. Yes. Uh, so tell us about her. And uh, has she also been an inspiration uh, for you? She was certainly an inspiration for me because when you have 
the model of someone actively doing the thing that you also love and interest someone older in you know in your family and my, my grandmother used to go off to the Society of Women Writers so she would actively go to writing groups and occasionally I went with her mm -hmm. so I was exposed to mentors you know right. of, of writers who were doing this but my, my grandmother's story was because she went through the Holocaust with my mother, who mm. was a young child. My mum was three months old when World War II began. Right. So her first six years were spent mm. first in the ghetto in Warsaw mm. and then on the run and in hiding. Mm. And my grandmother, was her mission was to stay alive, you know, right. to keep the two of them alive and get out of the war and be reunited mm. with a husband who had left Poland just before the war and then the borders were closed, he couldn't come back yeah. in. Yeah. So... Um, you know, it, life, life was all about survival. After she came out of the war, she discovered that her husband had remarried. He assumed they died. Right. And he remarried and had another child. So there was a lot of grief and trauma and betrayal and, you know, all right. those kinds of experiences. So they left Poland. That was too sad to stay there. And she'd mm -hmm. lost her sister and her parents and my grandmother had, you know. So mm -hmm. they came to Australia mm -hmm. and then my mother, my grandmother remarried and my mother grew up and all this. And my grandmother decided she wanted to write a book mm -hmm. to help put out that message so that it would never happen again. Right. Well, as we know, it continues to happen, doesn't it? We have <laughs> atrocities all over the world all the time. Right, in some but, way or the other. Yeah, yeah, but that was her contribution. So she wrote a book called Journey Without End which was what it felt like during the war when they yeah. were constantly on the go. Mm -hmm. And then they came to Australia. I think Australia. it jinxed because it continues. Yes, it's it, a journey oh, without end. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But look, she made her contribution. Right. You know, she, right. And it Most was a important. great book in it. And it was educational for me and for my family and for all the other people who've read that book. You know, it was, it was good. Yeah. Hmm. And she wrote a sequel, which was journey with um, the end of the journey I oh, remember, which was about you know her, her experience of arriving in Australia, Australia and then the migrant experience and mm -hmm. having to learn the language and the customs and to, to fit in right you know, with this <laughs> this very strange world <laughs> Lily there's so much more to share but I guess uh, we'll hold that on for another episode so uh, we'll catch up with you on another episode very soon